Quit stressing and overthinking it, guys. It's simple and you can't screw it up. Hey guys, welcome back to another Black Magic Craft Basics episode. Today, I am going to be talking to you about my Black Magic Craft base coat. It is the thing you've seen me do many times on my styrofoam projects. Essentially, if I build something out of styrofoam, before I paint it, it gets a coat in my Black Magic Craft base coat, which I'm making it sound like it's a really special thing that I invented, but it's literally just Mod Podge and black paint. There's no secret. However, I think because it is such a simple thing, some of you are getting hung up on the details of the ratios and how much to mix and how to mix it. And you're really worrying about something that you don't need to be worrying about whatsoever because this is not a big scientific secret mix. It's Mod Podge and black paint. I am gonna show you how I mix it, how much of the paint I use, and a few different things that I keep in mind when making it, just to put you at ease so you can confidently go make your own and start slapping it on your projects that you build. I'm also gonna take this opportunity to actually talk a little bit about Mod Podge and what it is and why I use it instead of just PVA glue in this application because it is not the same. Let's go over to the workbench and mix up a batch of Black Magic Craft base coat. I want to address a few things that I am sure will end up in the comments. It's inevitable that someone will ask, what exactly is Mod Podge? Someone will ask, isn't Mod Podge just PVA glue? Someone will ask, why is Mod Podge so expensive? It's more expensive than PVA. Do I need that? There's a lot of questions that I know this video will bring up. So I'm gonna to try to get to them first. Mod Podge, is it just PVA glue? Well, first of all, what is PVA glue? Polyvinyl acetate glue is a non-toxic, water-soluble glue, sometimes called Elmer's glue, sometimes called carpenter's glue, sometimes called white glue. It's everywhere. You have all used it. It's a great glue for a lot of applications because it is cheap, fairly easy to work with, easy to clean up, and it works really well in crafting. When you're buying PVA glue, there are actually different uh, consistencies that you can buy. Something like Elmer's glue or school glue uh, is going to be uh, heavily diluted PVA glue. It's going to be thinner, it's going to be less strong, and it's going to take longer to dry because of the higher water content. You also come across stuff labeled as carpenter glue, which is a higher concentration of PVA with less water in it. It's going to dry a little bit faster, it's going to dry a little bit stronger, and it's gonna be a little bit more expensive because there is actually more PVA in it and less water. Then you can get to stuff like tacky glue, which essentially is just an even thicker PVA glue. Again, it's gonna dry even faster, it's gonna hold even faster, it's gonna be thicker, and it's gonna be more expensive because it's a higher concentration. And there is a huge misconception that Mod Podge is just watered down PVA, that for some reason, despite its higher price, it is just watered down PVA. And that is incorrect. Mod Podge is a PVA based sealer and glue. It's mostly made up of PVA glue, that is true. However, what makes it different is some extra additives in it. And I don't know exactly what they are because they don't tell you what they are because that's their trade secrets. However, there are additives in this that one, make it flow better. So if you water down PVA glue and try this, buy some Mod Podge and compare the two. If you water down PVA glue and get it to the same consistency as the Mod Podge out of the tub, I guarantee you, you will not be able to brush it on as nicely and as smoothly as Mod Podge. Mod Podge, when you use it, goes on pretty much like paint, whereas PVA tends to have uh, a consistency that is too thick to brush on nicely, or if you water it down enough, goes on like milk, and it's hard to find that perfect in-between. It feels more rubbery when you're working with it. 
Mod Podge flows a bit better, which means that when you're covering your terrain projects, it's easier to get a consistent uh, coating on everything that also doesn't hide too many details in your sculpt that you put a lot of work into. The other and the most important difference between Mod Podge and PVA glue is that it actually has varnish in it. It has resin additives that act as a like water-based varnish. So it is truly a sealer, unlike PVA, which is an adhesive. Mod Podge can be used as a glue, and in fact, it is stronger than a lot of white glue off the shelf, but it is meant as a top coat in decoupage, in puzzle finishing, in all sorts of you know, arts and crafts. It is meant as a clear coat, similar to, you know, a varnish that you would buy for furniture, but on a, you know, easier to work with more crafting level. So it is not just PVA glue. It has varnish in it. And that's why I use it. And that's why I like it more. In addition to the application being much nicer. That being said, it is a little bit more expensive. And obviously uh, this is a hobby where it pays to be frugal. It's not that much more expensive. When you look at the, the price on the sticker, it can seem a little bit more. You get a bottle like this, you can get at the dollar store for a buck or two. Whereas an eight ounce bottle of Mod Podge on Amazon, if you check my store on my website, the price is six bucks for an eight ounce bottle. Well, if you go to a hardware store and you buy some, you know, carpenter glue or white glue, you're gonna pay around six bucks for this too. So the, the price is not drastically different. It's slightly more depending on what store you're comparing it to or what brand you're buying, a little bit more. But like I said, it acts much better and it serves a different purpose. Other thing is, while it has a higher cost by volume than PVA, I only use it to seal my projects. I essentially only use this to make this base coat that I'm gonna show you. I don't use it for gluing. I use PVA for just about everything else. If I'm gluing bricks and shingles and stuff on, I use tacky glue. If I'm, you know, doing different foams, I use the white PVA glue for actual gluing applications. So this gets saved just for the one step of coating my styrofoam projects, which means it lasts me a long time. I think a eight ounce bottle like this lasts me about several months, okay? So six bucks goes a very long way and coats a lot of projects. The big question, how much black paint do you put in it when you're making the base coat? The reality is it doesn't really matter, but I'll show you how I do it. So here I have an empty tub. What I did was when I, this was the first tub of Mod Podge I ever bought and when I ran out, I went and I bought a slightly bigger one because I you know, realized I was using it quite a bit. But I saved this one so that I could have a separate container that stays unmixed and clear in case I may want to use some clear stuff and one that is all pre-mixed in the tub. And to give you an idea of how much of this stuff I've gone through, I have been using Mod Podge in my craft for uh, I'd say about a year and a half and this is half empty uh, so I've used eight well actually it's not even because I just put it in there so I've probably gone through 12 ounces so two of these bottles in a year and a half so 12 bucks it's a buck a month I think it's an affordable product so now I filled this up to about here black paint doesn't matter what the brand is you just want a flat black craft paint by the cheapest you can get, shake it up and start pouring a bunch in. And it does not even matter how much you're putting in. I put in a healthy amount. I'm gonna say if this is, you know, eight ounces, I'm probably putting in maybe three quarters of an ounce of black paint, but it doesn't really matter. What I do is I pour a bunch in and I start mixing it up and you can see it's starting to turn gray and you are not looking for gray. You actually want this to turn pretty much black. So it takes a decent amount of mixing 
And you see there, it's starting to turn a dark gray, but I want it to be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna add a bunch more black paint. What happens if you don't add enough black paint? Well, if you don't add enough black paint, when you put this on and it dries, it will dry somewhat translucent. It'll be like kind of a translucent gray. And that's okay. Your project will still be sealed and you will still have a visual on any parts that you missed because there will be a color to it. But you may then need to give your piece a quick light coat of just black paint before moving on to paint because the uh, Mod Podge came out kind of gray. But that's okay. And if you mix up a batch of this and you find that it went on a little bit clear, well, just add some more black paint to your tub for next time. Now, what happens if you add too much black paint? Well, uh, then you're gonna end up with a coat on your projects that is nice and dark and covers very well, but your Mod Podge will be a little bit more diluted. It will be very slightly uh, less strong because the more paint, the more diluted the Mod Podge is, which means that it will be a little bit weaker. It's going to be fairly inconsequential. This is still gonna seal your project. It is still going to make your project harder. It's still gonna lock all those little bits in place. So when I say it doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter. Get a tub of Mod Podge, pour in a bunch of black paint until it turns black and use it and adjust. Sometimes I make up a batch and I start putting it on and I noticed yeah, it's a little bit thin so I add some more black paint. Go nuts, experiment. You really can't mess this one up guys. Just do it. See, I told you, super easy. And now that you can confidently make your own batch of Black Mod Podge, I highly encourage you to make it a regular part of your terrain building routine. Put it on basically every foam piece you make and it will last much longer. If you like this video, hit that like button. If there's some other basics videos that you would like me to cover, drop me a comment below. If you aren't already a subscriber, come on, hit subscribe. I'm putting out a new video every Friday. If you're looking to buy some of the tools and supplies that I use and wanna make sure you are purchasing the right stuff, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have a web store where I link to all of the stuff that I myself actually use. You can also go and click the link to the sweet Black Magic Craft t-shirts if you want to show your Black Magic Craft pride. And of course, if you wanna help me help you guys and ensure that I can keep making these videos, the best way you can do that is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. The funds for my Patreon supporters are the reason this channel continues to exist and I hope will continue to exist for many years to come. So if you can spare a buck or two a month to help keep this channel going, I would greatly appreciate it, guys. And until next time, happy crafting.